So the next one is uh, just show you the hangar. Um, this is the main deck or level zero basically, or the main uh, deck of the fly, uh, the deck of the ship. This is the main deck, not the not the flight deck uh, in aircraft. As I mentioned in the part one, is the uh, main deck is actually the hangar deck. Okay. Uh, Unfortunately, DC as super carrier hasn't really completed the module, so it's uh, we cannot really utilize this. I don't know how they're gonna provide us control inside the hangar. It could be from AI or using certain manual positioning. Uh, I don't know. We'll see about that. But it's quite a huge hangar. There's also some uh, workshop over there to maintain the engine uh, and uh, electronics and other other things to do uh, uh, maintenance, a uh, routine maintenance for the aircraft. So this one is the island. Uh, as mentioned in the part one, uh, they don't call it a deck. Flight deck is, they call it a deck because it's the whole, covering the whole ship. But uh, the level is being used because the island is not a deck, right? Basically a structure, super structures on top of the flight deck. So here, starting from, Zero five level uh, is a flight deck controller. What this is uh, where the aircraft handler uh, are situated here is a very important guy. Later on, I'm going to discuss that. Uh, next level is zero six level, uh, usually occupied by meteorological rooms uh, like weather stations uh, and everything. And then uh, zero seven level is radar room, and zero eight is flag bridge. Flag bridge is occupied by the rear, uh, rear admiral or the uh, the commanding officer for the carrier strike group. Usually, can occupy this uh, uh, level. But I think in the uh, recent modification, they already moved the flag bridge down below into CDC or CIC level, uh, just below the flight deck. Uh, like there is the command, uh, you know, uh, center in uh, below the flight deck. Uh, above the flag bridge is the ship bridge itself. So this is the X, uh, XO, uh, the CO, sorry, the CO, uh, the commanding officer of the ship uh, situated here. Right? Uh, so this is where you navigate the ship, basically. Uh, on top of that, there is a primary, primary flight control, 0, 010 level. So this is the tower, basically, of the carrier. Like in the land base. Uh, there is a ATC tower, right? So this is basically the tower for the carrier, but not the ATC. So this is basically uh, the primary flight control is responsible for within five nautical mile radius. Uh, any airplane enter that radius uh, is under primary flight control um, handling. So let's say you have to wait, uh, enter a waiting pattern uh, above the above the carrier let's say 2000 feet or just waiting for the for the case one recovery for example to enter the case one recovery or the the the, the circuits to to recover the uh, rec uh, the aircraft uh, those are handled by this uh, primary flight control so this is the inside look of the primary flight control uh, i managed to sneak inside uh, so there's the air boss basically the, the the commanding officer for this uh primary flight control um room uh, there's a mini boss uh, there basically his assistant actually there's two mini boss uh, one sitting here one sitting over there uh, i don't uh, yeah i think they're basically assisting the air boss so uh, and the uh, funny thing is they look the same uh, so using the same uh, models, 3D models, basically. It's still very low polygon. I don't know if they're going to increase or not, but uh, hopefully they do when we can, let's say, do some uh, Airbus command uh, from the stations. They're going to improve the 3D modeling, I hope. It's very, very low polygon at this moment. Uh, so this one is the ship bridge on 09 level. Uh, yeah, so there's several crew here, but uh, it didn't show any captain of the ship. Or they could wear the same uniform. I don't know. This is the flag bridge. Almost the same look at the as the ship bridge. Uh, yeah. 
And another interesting one, I found this one is a plat operator. It's pilot landing eight televisions. So basically there's a, a crew inside this bubble. If you look here, actually he's stationed here in 07 level next to radar room. So just below the flag bridge. In the newer setup, I guess they put under the primary flight controller uh, level, um, below primary flight control level in the, I think, new, new design of Gerald Ford, uh, Gerald Ford uh, aircraft carrier, if not mistaken. So yeah, this one is the plat, uh, pilot landing aid television. So they're gonna record your landing sequence or takeoff sequence uh, for uh, archive purposes and also for evaluations. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I read that it is shown into into the, you know, uh, um, pilot launch basically. So if you make a lot of problem uh, landing, it's gonna sh shown to everyone, right? So it's it put another pressure, basically psychological pressure for the pilot. So yeah, the this uh, plat uh, is one of the. I think if you see in the if you search in the YouTube, there's a lot of uh, very horrifying uh, video about mishap in uh, recovery of the aircraft. This is shot by this guy, basically the recorded by this guy. So I got this very amazing drawing from Paterno Digital. I borrow from him. Sorry, Pat. Um, I hope it's okay just to show uh, some educational purposes. Uh, so this is a cutaway. I'm not going to use this for any other things. I'm not going to monetize anyway in this video. So this is the cutaway of the Nimitz class uh, Reagan uh, uh, 76 Reagan, right? Ronald Reagan. Uh, so uh, it show a lot of uh, things here there's engine room uh, armory yeah so another machinery room here and this is the hangar straight stretch from the bow to the stern basically and uh, above the hangar there is a uh, fourth level i guess zero four level uh, contain a lot of important uh, like a uh, room basically a cdc is a combat direction center uh, CIC Combat Information Center and CATC C or Carrier Air Traffic Control Center. So, in aircraft, the ATC is not seated up in the in the tower, but underneath uh, the flight deck or below the flight deck. Uh, they will control the aircraft uh, beyond five nautical mile radius. So, oh, yeah. So that that's his responsibility of the C, uh, Carrier Air Traffic Control and a comm center here. So this usually a dark room, meaning that there's no sunlight, uh, uh, whatever in this room, uh, only artificial light and usually darken like a blue light or red light during combat situation uh, showing up. Uh, so, uh, you know, a lot of monitors to monitor, you know, the video, radar, uh, uh, situational awareness map, whatever. So this is a very important area during combat. Uh, you see also the tactical flag command center is not shown here, move from this uh, zero 08 level down here. So basically the the tactical flag command center or the flag uh, commander will be here. So you can see this is the uh, deck handler or flight deck handler. Uh, the aircraft hand, uh, handler is here, situated here with, he, with his Ouija board. Uh, arrange, uh, uh, controlling the movement from the hangar flight deck for every aircraft and then the meter uh, weather room uh, radar room and then the flag admiral bridge and then navigational bridge basically the ship bridge where the captains helmsmen and everyone uh, um, controlling the, the navigation of the ship and then the primary flight controller or the air boss seated situation on top on the most top of the island. So here you can see uh, how it arranged. Uh, you can visit his site. Uh, it's very uh, nice uh, drawing. So yeah, this one is the, so in aircraft carrier, there is at least four to five uh, officer controlling the movement of the aircraft. 
First of all, during uh, takeoff, the aircraft handler will control from the flight deck control uh, where the aircraft has to be moved from hangar to flight deck from one spotting area to preparation uh, spot, for example, he will control the movement basically un, uh, below the deck or flight deck and in the hangar and, the, uh, uh, and on top of the flight deck. So he's the boss. Basically, the uh, he will be responsible for the movement of the aircraft and equipments and everything in, in the aircraft. And he using a very manual Ouija board uh, not even electronic, I guess. I guess I don't know why, but I guess for durable purposes, I think it's very durable because it's manual. So they have a replica of the aircraft with its fuel state, uh, uh, armament, and if it's not function, uh, if the aircraft is not ready, it will flip back, for example, and uh, they they know uh, which aircraft is where. The next uh, who control the aircraft uh, after or before landing within five nautical mile is the primary flight control in zero ten 10 level which is the air boss mini boss and his crew so uh, they will control the movement of the aircraft in let's like, say in the waiting patterns above the aircraft let's say 2000 uh, miles above uh, and uh, yeah so they are the one who responsible but uh, almost uh, within the three quarter miles before landing the air boss will hand over the control to the LSO, right? So that's another guy, another team who gonna be responsible for the movement of the aircraft on the recovery cycle. So only already three, right? So this one is the CATC. CATC is basically on zero four level below flight deck, control movement of aircraft outside five nautical mile in coordination with another air control, which is aboard usually aboard uh, airborne E2 Hawkeye. So they both can be contactable by pilot. In DC as a carrier, we usually uh, call ATC, meaning we call them first. But in super carrier, when you enter the five nautical mile radius, it, is, it will automatically trigger a radio communication with a primary control, not with ATC anymore. So before I don't know that, but once I read that, now I understand that that's why there's another uh, chat again within the five nautical mile. It is automatic at this moment uh, with uh, car uh, DCS super carrier, so you don't have to do anything. So they will within that that radius, the the pilot will contact uh, the primary control for uh, case one recovery or case two recovery, for example. Uh, it's uh, yeah, just for the entering uh, the circuit to land into the uh, aircraft carrier. So this is another photo for the CIC, Combat Information Center. So it's very dark, usually in, uh, in blue light, but they show a lot of videos, uh, maps, everything, just to to gather a lot of information uh, around the battles, uh, aircraft situations and everything. And there's a Combat Direction Center. I don't know the real purpose of this group. I think, I suppose it will, uh, trying to understand uh, situational awareness with uh, around the carrier strike group and tactical flag command centers. I think it's already moved into down below here, showing uh, you know a lot of uh, screen monitoring, uh, situational awareness around uh, the combat uh, or battle uh, uh, area in the vicinity uh, in under responsibility of the carrier strike group. So this one usually occupied by the commanding officer of the carrier strike group, the rear admiral, and probably some gas or probably some intelligence officers, whatever. So next is the defense systems of the carrier. Uh, there are several spots. Basically, one is the, in the starboard bow, uh, front right of the aircraft carrier. Uh, this one is RIM-7 Sea Sparrow, short run uh, land to air anti aircraft missiles is initially is actually uh, created from the AIM 7 uh, air to air missiles but modified into land to air anti aircraft missiles. It has Mark 95 illuminator, so it's automatic illuminator. Before, I think it's manual, now it's automatic. Uh, 
multiple ones so they can track several aircraft together and then mark 91 fire control system mark 23 target acquisition systems it has a speed of mark 2 and i think it's going to be improved further into ver certain versions uh, recently and um and the next uh to it next to it is actually phalanx series or close in weapon systems it has a six barrel um gun uh, with it can shoot uh, 3000 rounds per minute basically it can create a shield of bullets in front of the incoming missiles or even aircraft in, and it's very damaging and it has its own radar here tracking radar here uh, so it's standalone without have to connect with the ship radar tracking radar the the other one is actually on the port bow uh, on the opposite side on the left side front left side is the rem 116 it is a rolling airframe airframe missiles so basically the missiles is rolling when they travel to create a stable uh, trajectory and it's very fast but it's lightweight uh, but this one is infrared homing rather than the radar homing it can home with certain radio signal but yeah it's, i think there's a three mode like only infrared infrared uh, uh, rad uh, radio only and then infrared plus radio homing systems uh, to the target uh, it, it used mk144 guided missile launcher gml uh, and then mk49 guided missile launching systems okay the other defense systems are in the starboard quarter it is also uh, equipped with rim 116 rolling airframe uh, missile and phalanx series uh, close-in weapon systems and on the port quarter the defense systems are equipped with uh, rem 7 sea sparrow short-range land air-to-air uh, anti-aircraft missiles and phalanx series also close-in weapon system so this is the facing the port uh, previous one is facing the starboard so covering the rear part of the carrier itself so yeah so there's a four spot of defense systems around the ship and you can see here part of the landing or recovery uh, systems there's a uh, basically there's a small piece of equipment here called long range laser lineup system so basically it show you either you are off left off right of the uh, glide pad you know during landing uh, rec or recovering uh, glide pad so this is very important to see it's very powerful you can see from afar basically uh, the red green uh, and orange light so orange I think is supposed to be okay you are on the spot similar with the the ball basically the ball give you a vertical um, uh, your level uh, your vertical positions either in the glide in the right glide slope above the glide slope or below the glide slope while the long range li laser lineup system giving you the direction of your uh, left and right are you going to the port of the ship or the starboard of the ship right uh, there's another one is actually drop lights be careful drop lights it's just drop lights sometimes in the dark probably in the bad weather it's not the landing strip or the landing platform basically it's a uh, drop lights meaning that if you aim for this one you're gonna hit the fan tail or the stern of the ship right so just be careful with this slide so quickly this is uh our trivia questions do you know what symbol is this uh this e symbol uh, of course this one is navy symbol but this one e i was perplexed what is uh you know i thought it was like a specific to each aircraft or carrier or something but turn out actually this symbol is battle e award excellence award right so it's a uh, usually in the in this starboard side of the island there is certain sticker or um, uh, decals or marking here something like this colorful like green yellow blue red black uh or, and actually purple uh if turn out to be that that is the battle e uh, effectiveness award so certain um, ship will receive this one so it's a very prestigious unit award so basically you uh, your ship have a very excellent uh, commanding um, 
um, yeah, performance basically in several area, which is maritime uh, warfare, engineering, survivability, command and control, health and wellness, logistic management, ship safety, and efficiency excellence. So, this is uh, some some ship actually received several awards. I think uh, the the slanted line here is actually denoting uh, how many times they get it, like a rank, basically. If you are getting repeatedly this award, you get it more rank. It can be like triple line here, uh, if not mistaken. Uh, somebody who probably in the Navy can tell you more about it, but it's very interesting. I thought it was a symbol of uh, a logo of a ship or something, but turn out it was a... Uh, uh, this award, uh, it's very prestigious awards, competing awards across the Navy. So this one is showing uh, an overview of the aircraft or the bird eye view from aft uh, view or boat to stern. So looking aft uh, from the boat to stern. So I this is my arrangement for my uh, DCS super carrier. I'll make a video on it, uh, of it, but uh, basically this setup uh, allow me to launch E2 Hawkeye first, and then S3 second, and then the first patrol uh, squadron, two of here, two of there, um, sequen uh, sequentially without any mishaps. So, and then my squadron sitting here, this is my uh, aircraft here, I always put it here, I don't know why, but anyway, that's a very odd uh, spotting area because this aircraft wouldn't be uh, the one, uh, the uh, previous to, to my takeoff, for example, if I, I'm taking off the on the second um, uh, group of the fighter attack squadron, uh, flight uh, routine, basically, the second group to take off, uh, this aircraft cannot use the catapult first catapult because I'm blocking the way, right? So basically it's only catapult two, catapult three and four that can be used by this patrol group. And of course this E2 and S3 here. Um, if I can move a bit here, for example, yeah, that that aircraft can use basically all catapult. So I don't know how DCS super carrier or the logic is uh, arranged, but unfortunately today it cannot control you know, so what I did is I, I certain put a certain logic in the triggers to ensure this one start first and take off first, and you know, next is S3 and next is this group, next my group. So that I will make another video to create that simple trigger points. So this is a force view from stern to bow. Um, yeah, so you can see this uh, E2 Hawkeye will start first and then followed by this. S3 Viking, you cannot use timer basically. It has a, you have you have to use certain logic basically to to arrange uh, the trigger points. And this this second uh, this first patrol uh, from VFA eighty four uh, squadron, uh, of course, is hi hypothetical because VFA eighty four don't have a FA eighteen C. Uh, they directly from move from Tomcat to FA eighteen. E and F, and this is another two of VFA eighty four, and then the mine is VFA one three one or Wildcats. So this is the forward view of, uh, and then the starboard view, uh, as I've seen, I've shown you in uh, in uh, when I show you on the the elevator, and this is the Seahawk helicopters. I put it already airborne. I don't know if it's a bug or not, but if I put it uh, start from RAM, it won't start, basically. <laughs> I don't know why. Even I already triggered several times, it won't start. Uh, so I cannot put in the RAM first and then fly off here. And uh, yeah, so just put it here, uh, 100 feet above the aircraft, next to it, yeah, and with the, the same speed, almost the same speed. I think I put a lower speed than aircraft to allow the, the helicopter to follow the, the ships properly. And uh, this is the port side view. It's a bit uh, backlighting, so not so clear. So this one show E2 has launched uh, from Catapult 3. And you can see several of the um, support 
or defend ship in the strike group. And this one is S3 launched from Catapult 4. So it will wait a bit because E2 is here. The uh, S3 won't come in uh, with its wing open as a previous in the previous carrier before super carrier uh, using uh, John Stennis, for example, in the earlier version of the carrier. You know, it will just, you know, enter this catapult and the wing will just hit each other, <laughs> you know. Uh, I think that's a bug of, uh, in the old carrier, but I think in the this year super carrier is fixed. Uh, it will wait if it's not able to to fit uh, because E2 is quite uh, wide, right? When it spread its wing, it will wait uh, just before the catapults until E2 is off and then S3 is in. So it's quite nice, but as long as you, if you're not doing any trigger, it will be chaos. You know, like uh, Hornet will start first and move here and then hit these helicopters. I don't know why the logic is so bad that the the Hornet will start moving around. Like this one go here, that, that one go try to go to the catapult too, and I don't know. So it's quite a mess without a trigger. If you do proper trigger and you do allow uh, a clean space uh, to allow them uh, move freely in the deck, it should be okay. So this is the, sorry, it's a bit cut, is the, this is the Escort. Uh, one of it is the Ticonderoga class cruisers. This is Aegis a, 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 uh, a, uh, guided missile cruisers. Ticonderoga class. Uh, I, in, uh, in the, Part one video, you you will know that usually it can be at, at least one cruisers or two uh, in certain cases or even four in in a certain battle group. Next one is Arleigh Burke class destroyer. So at least uh, a squadron, meaning uh, a squadron had at least two uh, destroyer in it. So you have to put minimum two destroyer in a carrier's strike group to to looks proper, it looks like a real world situation. So this is also Aegis uh, guided missile destroyer. And then uh, frigate is optional, but usually at least one, uh, can be two. Uh, here is Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate. Yeah, so in certain case, uh, in my part one video, there's a ser several examples that there's uh, even two frigates, uh, yeah, can be more, but yeah, at least one or two frigates accompanying the destroyer. You can put more destroyer without the frigates, yeah, it's your options. This is, I put also the Tarawa class landing helicopter assault uh, LHA type amphibious assault ship. So this, um, uh, you can launch uh, amphibious uh, um vehicle from behind and there's a lot of helicopter even the Harrier FA-8B can be stationed here it's just uh, just me putting here in most of the case rarely the LHA is combined with the carrier strike group I haven't really seen the, the example in real life but yeah you can you can do it in in your hypothetical scenario basically okay so that is the video about um, a lot of things around the aircraft carrier, the systems, um, the levels, uh, the inside of the carrier, how it operates, who's controlling who's uh, during the the recovery cycle or the launch cycle, uh, how it works uh, in certain parts of the aircraft carrier systems, the defense systems, and also we talk about uh, several more details in uh, in the in arrangement of the. Uh, the aircraft in the super carrier, especially in DCS. I will create another video for, on how to do it, but just to touch base uh, uh, quickly on that area. So the next video will talk about the, the the personnel or and the items or the equipment that can be used in a carrier. Basically, you will know who's to put who where and which item needs to be put where and what is the function of that uh, equipment, for example, so you have better understanding uh, what is in the real life and what is uh, was, uh, to be replicated in the DCS Supercarrier Simulator. So see you next time.